Hey everyone, this is Jeff Kanoff with Copperworks Distilling. I'm the Vice President and Co-Owner of Copperworks. Uh, back with another Friday edition of Copperworks Distilling Live. Uh, we're doing these every Friday, kind of mixing it up between production techniques uh, and then talking about some of our releases, our whiskeys, our gins. Uh, give people a little chance to get on here. I see we have a few already joined up. Uh, just a reminder, you can check out the Instagram TV on our profile and you can view all of the past versions of these. Um, so for example, last week Jason was on talking about brewing. So you can go review that, uh, learn a little bit about brewing. Uh, some of you who know us know Jason has over uh, 30 years of professional brewing experience, so a lot of knowledge there. So it should be fun to watch that one if you haven't gotten a chance. Uh, hi Molly Dillmore, hi Craftwork Spirits, welcome, welcome. Um, so today we are going to be talking about our newest release. So this is kind of one of our uh, what we call taste panel versions of the Copperworks Distilling Live, um, where we'll talk about our releases as they come out. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Since this is the first time we've done the uh, single cask um, discussion on a, on a live version like this, I'm not only going to talk about the specific cask, but I'll talk a little bit about single casks, you know, how we choose them, um, you know, why we do single casks at all, and kind of compare it to some other people's approach as well. Um, by the way, definitely feel free to ask any questions. Um, definitely want to be talking about what people want to hear rather than just the list of things that I want to talk about. Um, so feel free to chime in and I'll try to address what I see uh, come by on the screen. Uh, by the way, grab a whiskey if you don't have one. Uh, this release just came out yesterday, uh, a little bit earlier for our uh, First Cut subscribers. Uh, so some of you may have it, but you know a lot of you don't. Uh, grab another Copperworks American Single Malt Whiskey or uh, you know any whiskey or any spirit of your choice. Um, so let's kick it off with the uh, kind of simple question of what is a single cask? Um, you know, same thing as a single barrel. Um, basically this is, you know, a term that's not legally defined, but it means it comes from just one physical barrel or cask. So there's no barrels blended in with it. Uh, it's basically this distillery fills that cask some number of years ago and then decides that it's something they want to release on its own. Um, oftentimes they're released at their natural cask strength. Um, so this release I'm talking about today, release 32, is at its natural cask strength. So that simply means that when we take it out of the barrel, we don't add any water to it, we don't dilute it in any way. Um, we just put it right into the bottle for you to enjoy it as it is right out of the, the barrel. Um, so kind of a simple definition, obviously, but uh, the key is to kind of differentiate it from normal releases. So most whiskey releases are not single barrels. Uh, most of them are hundreds, if not thousands of barrels blended together to attempt to make a consistent product. Um, even in the whiskey world, when you see the term small batch, often that means upwards of 100 barrels combined. Um, now, when you hear Copperworks say small batch, we definitely mean quite a bit smaller than that. So our typical release is anywhere between one and nine barrels. So quite small compared to the typical whiskey industry. Um, and you know that's going to get you anywhere from about 200 bottles up to about you know 2,000, 2,500 maybe depending on on the uh, bottle strength. Um, so keeping that in mind, you know you might say, well, why doesn't everybody just do single casks? They seem to be quite popular. Um, the thing is, a single cask can be a really great product, but it's not always. It doesn't always mean it's better just to use one single barrel. Um, oftentimes, a barrel is missing certain flavors or aromas, and by adding another barrel to blend with it, you can pick up some of the things that it's missing. So when we're blending different barrels, we kind of think of you're creating a sphere in the air. So it's going to go in different directions for different flavors and aromas you have, and you want to fill in that whole sphere so you have that complete uh, picture of all the flavors and aromas that you want in a whiskey release. Now that said, we do like releasing single cask whiskeys from time to time. Uh, and your next question might be, hey, how do you do that? Why do you pick one? Um, when do you do it? Um, we don't do it super often, you'll notice. Um, this one, uh, you know, we haven't done one for a while directly from the distillery. And you'll actually hear later this particular recipe. It's the first time we've ever released a single cask of this recipe. Uh, we typically will release a single cask when it is either very well balanced so that it doesn't really need any other characteristics brought together um, or it is very interesting so it might be imperfect but it's so fun and interesting that we want people to experience those really interesting flavors 
The one we're talking about today, release 32, cask number 206, um, is more in the well-balanced category, in, in my mind at least, and I was one of the ones that selected to release it. Um, so this one is just so good on its own that we didn't feel it needed to be with other barrels to represent Copperworks whiskey uh, out in the world, so we released it on its own. Um, so let's dive into the product itself. I'm going to throw up a little picture of it while I start talking about it, just so you know what it looks like. Um, those of you who are new to our brand, we make all American single malt whiskeys. So our whiskeys are always going to be 100% malted barley, all made at our single distillery in downtown Seattle, right on the waterfront. So with that background, this particular product is made from a recipe we call our five malt recipe, which is like a Scotch ale style beer. It has 25% caramelized malts, so it has much darker characteristics in the base beer that we distill than your typical Scottish single malt, for example. Now a natural question might be, hey, you said you make all single malt whiskeys, um, but you told me this is you know, five malt. Now those of you who are familiar with uh, single malt whiskey know that the single refers to it coming from a single distillery, not the actual types of barley used in the product. So you can use all kinds of barley in the product as long as you've made it at a single distillery and from 100% malted barley. Now it turns out most Scottish distillers do just use a single uh, variety of barley in every distillate that they make. Um, but at Copperworks, being that we're backgrounds as brewers, uh, we use beer recipes. So this five malt recipe is akin to a Scotch ale. Um, so a really dark style of beer um, that's gonna go into our stills to create our single malt whiskey. So like I said, this is the first time we've actually released that recipe as a single barrel directly from our distillery. So out of 32 releases, We've never done that directly from our distillery. We did some with some partners um, here and there, uh, Total Wine and more uh, here in Washington State, uh, but we have not actually done one direct from the distillery. So this is the first one we kind of chose on our own um, to put out to you guys. So it was matured for 41 months, so um, just a bit over three years in a brand new charred American oak barrel as a char number three. Um, so it's very uh, similar to the type of whiskey uh, sorry, the type of whiskey barrel that's used in bourbon industry. Um, so it gets a lot of kind of a, a character from the char, some vanilla, some sweetness, a lot of filtration through that char layer. Um, so it's a nice barrel to use if you're going to age a whiskey anywhere from about two to eight years. Anytime over that, you're probably going to want to use a used barrel or something with a lighter char or even just toasted. Um, but great for something that's going to be, you know, somewhere in the range of three to four years, which this one is. It's at 41 months. Um, so I will go back to kind of seeing you guys full now that you've got a look at the bottle. If I can figure out how to do that. There we go. Cool. So um, like I said, this one we chose to release on its own because it is super well balanced. I'm going to get right into kind of the tasting notes of it. So I got a glass in front of me. Um, this one to me jumped out as an old fashioned in a glass. So when you hear that, you can kind of obviously see what I mean by it being well balanced. It's you know already kind of reminding me of a cocktail. So quite drinkable on its own. And that's even at its full cask strength, which by the way is 59.7% alcohol. Um, so quite high. Uh, we find our whiskey often has a ton of body and mouthfeel, so it's quite drinkable even at the high cast strengths. Um, so we do like to release the cast strength product every once in a while. Those of you who have had our whiskey uh, before, uh, know that even our standard releases tend to be over 100 proof most of the time. Uh, and again, that's because we do have a nice body and mouthfeel on our whiskey because of our brewing and fermentation process. Uh, and you're going to hear a lot about that from, from Jason through some of these production versions that you can catch on uh, next week and um, on uh, Instagram TV in the past. So this one, like I said, kind of like an old fashioned. I'm getting a lot of maraschino cherry in the nose, some orange oil, a lot of baking spices, particularly clove. Um, definitely a little bit of a floral note as well, um, kind of like you're out in like a wildflower field, um, getting some of those um, floral notes. Um, a lot of Demerara sugar, so kind of that dark sugar, you know, brown sugar note. A uh, little bit of orange pith. Getting into the palate, a lot of similar things. Um, some like coffee cake, a little bit of like malted milk candy, um, like a Whopper kind of a thing going on. Uh, and then some nuttiness, and again, more of that baking spice, especially in the finish. Um, I will say, while you're tasting a whiskey like this, a single cask at cask strength, it's really great, obviously, to taste it at its natural strength from the barrel. Um, but it's also good to have a little dropper or something that you can add a small amount of water. It can really help open up the whiskey. Um, so, you know, adding like three, four, five, six drops um, to start, and then seeing what that does. 
Often with the cast strength whiskey, what you'll find that does is sweetens it a little bit. You get a little less of the heat from the alcohol and you get more of the sweetness coming out, particularly when you have a new barrel whiskey like this. And then it can also be fun to just add even more water to see what it would be like at sort of a standard bottling strength, you know, 90 to 100 proof, um, since we're starting, uh, you know, all the way up at almost 120 proof on this one. Yeah, so definitely getting more sweetness, um, a lot more of that Demerara sugar, uh, definitely a lot of fruity notes. Still has a, quite a bit of the baking spice to it. Um, definitely, definitely fun on that uh, nose for sure. I'm gonna add a little more water to see what that does. Definitely chime in if anybody has any questions. Let me know what you're thinking, if anybody's tasted this whiskey, um, which like I said, this just came out yesterday. So probably not a ton of people have tasted it yet. So hopefully when you hear uh, some of the things I'm saying about it, makes you wanna pick up a bottle. And I'll tell you a little bit about how to do that later. Another question we get a lot just in general, given that we have a tasting room on the Seattle waterfront, is hey, what, what kind of cocktails can I use your spirits in? And you might think, hey, this is a special whiskey, single cask, cask strength, probably shouldn't use it in cocktails. Um, I kind of completely disagree with that. I think if you want to have a cocktail with it, go for it. That said, I would stick to more spirit forward cocktails, so you're really getting the essence of the whiskey. Um, we, we like to take whiskey just seriously enough, um, but we don't take it so seriously that we're like, you know, looking down on people who use whiskey in certain ways. Um, for me personally, I would do an old fashioned with this. Obviously, I've been talking about those flavors and how they're perfect. You know, just add a little bit more of uh, bitters, a little more sweetness with a little bit of a simple syrup. Um, and then obviously stir it on ice, bring it down a little bit in proof. Maybe, um, you know, an orange peel, uh, essence of orange oil on top that goes with a lot of flavors that I'm getting in this. Um, cool thing about old fashioned is you can play around with the bitters. You can use all kinds of different uh, flavored bitters. I mean, if you go, you know, online and search cocktail bitters, you can probably find 500 accessible cocktail bitters right now, all different kinds of flavor focuses. So if you are tasting a whiskey like this one and you're getting certain notes, it's interesting to maybe try some bitters that mimic those notes. Also think about what uh, flavors might uh, complement those notes. Um, you know, so certain flavors we know go well together. So for example, uh, if you're getting a lot of orange, uh, I love chocolate orange, right? So I might try a chocolate bitter. Um, Scrappy's Bitters here in Seattle, they make uh, Theo chocolate bitters. Uh, so kind of collaboration between two other Seattle companies. I think that would be fantastic with this as an old fashioned because you're getting that, you know, nice chocolate orange flavor going together. And of course, chocolate and cherry is no problem either. So that'd be good. Uh, I got now says, I love the Copperworks Distillery. We love you as well. Thanks for the shout out there. Um, let me know if you've uh, tried any of our recent re releases and what you think of them. Um, another thing you can do with this other than an old fashioned is a Manhattan. Again, you know, very classic, very straightforward in terms of the spirit coming through. Um, so you wanna be able to taste that. The high proof of this means that if you dilute it with the vermouth and some of the ice, you're still having a really fantastic, nice, intense experience from the whiskey. And again, the same way you can play around with bitters for the old fashioned, you can play around with different vermouth choices. Um, so maybe pick something like Punti Mace that has a nice spice note to it to go with some of these flavors. Um, you know, all kinds of vermouths in, in the, the states these days that you have access to. Um, so try, you know, two different Manhattans, make little mini ones uh, or full size ones and uh, see how they compare depending on which vermouth you use. Uh, hello from San Diego, Hopworks was a highlight of my last trip to Seattle. Thank you. Um, that's great to hear. Uh, right now our tasting room is unfortunately mostly closed. We can't wait to get back to it. It's one of our favorite things is to kind of hang out with people that come visit, um, chat with them, share our spirits. So we can't wait to be back at that. Uh, I got now saying it's great with a cigar. Uh, I agree. Yeah, our whiskey, again, because of that body and mouth feel, uh, it can stand up to, you know, even a really uh, strongly uh, intensely flavored cigar. Um, so definitely uh, try that out if you're a cigar fan. So that kind of covers it on what I wanted to talk about on this release. Uh, definitely let me know again if you have any questions. Um, if you are interested in buying this particular release, release 32, and by the way, I'll throw it back up on the screen, um, I would hop on it now. So store.copperworksdistilling.com. Um, this release, like I said, just went on sale yesterday to the public. Um, we've already sold about 100 bottles, I think like 98 bottles so far. Uh, just in you know basically 24 hours there's only 230 bottles total because you know as we've been talking about it's a single cask whiskey so it's just from one barrel 
Um, so definitely hop on it if you want to get a bottle because I'm not sure it'll last much more than, you know, a week, maybe two, something like that. Uh, maybe last a little longer because the tasting room is closed, um, but hopefully you guys uh, are excited about the flavors I'm talking about and want to try it and pick it up. We do have free shipping right now if you spend uh, $115 or more. Um, so in most cases, that's just two bottles. Um, for those of you who are kind of new to Copperworks, not only do we have this whiskey, um, we have uh, right now release 31, which is more of a standard release, so to speak. Again, our releases are only one to nine barrels, so they're all pretty special. Um, we also have vodka, gin, we have a barrel finished gin, um, so there are quite a few options. And we have a few bottles left of a really special peated gin, actually two different peated gins that we did. So there's a lot of options to get you to that free shipping mark. So check us out, store.copperworksdistilling.com. Um, definitely please spread and share you know, the word of Copperworks to your friends. Uh, please share this video, share the post talking about this product. Um, like I said in the beginning, we're gonna be doing these every week, so you can go to Instagram TV and check out the old versions. We also have them on our YouTube channel, which you can just search for uh, Copperworks Distilling on YouTube. Um, next week, Jason's gonna be back with some more production techniques. He'll be covering yeast and fermentation. So those of you that heard me at the beginning, uh, Jason has over 30 years of brewing experience. Um, so hearing someone like that talk about yeast and fermentation uh, is, is fantastic. So come with your questions about the yeast and fermentation or anything else for that matter. Uh, and we will see you next week at four o'clock Pacific time, uh, Friday for that talk. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I don't see any more comments or questions, so I'm just going to uh, call it end in here. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Cheers, everyone.